Today, we're going to go over the importance of knowing who your target audience is and why it is a foundational must for you to know. So maybe you're wondering, what even is a target audience and why is it so important? So your target audience is who you are creating all your content for. So it's not the why of your business, but it is the who. Who is this for? This roadmap is something that I've been using for over eight years with my clients to help them along the, the way with their branding. Um, oftentimes I feel that people think that they know who their target audience is, but once we dive into it a little bit deeper, then often they haven't really narrowed down enough and narrowing down to one person to utilize the power of one in your marketing is extremely important. So what we're going to do is go through the process. I'm going to, I'm going to give you three branding tips at the end but let's start with our target audience roadmap, okay? So inside of this roadmap, which you can find on my website and I'll link below, um, are four very simple questions, but they're very powerful questions that I used with my clients. So what I'm asking is, tell me all the basic facts about your person. Tell me the person last name, where are they located, and get really specific. Often people want to be super broad and say stuff like, you know, I work with everyone, or my clients are female from ages of 35 to 55, and they're not able to then create the content that is required as an entrepreneur for to speak directly to that that ideal person that they want to work with and so they find it very frustrating because they cannot narrow down and can't create content you can't create copy images and marketing or even creating offers can be a challenge if you don't really know exactly who you're working um, or trying to work with. So once we get through these four questions, you'll see how it'll be easier to figure out who the person is and also to create offers for them specifically, you know, so you can create the offers that are going to speak to the needs of your target audience just by answering these four questions. But you have to get really, you have to go deeper and dive deep into it. You can't just um, answer surface level. So the next section is the backstory. So in the backstory, that's usually when they're telling you what their problem is. They're going to, they're going to give you the pain points. And after that, you're able to come up with the solution. So Let's use an example. So in my example, we're going to say Stephanie is my person and she's come to me and she really needs help finding more clients. She gets clients, but very inconsistently. And so she's spending all of her time just trying every little thing that she knows. If one thing doesn't work, she's moving on and trying the next thing. Um, and then, then the next thing, and then the next thing, and then ends up just driving herself in circles. And so she's getting really tired of that. And so she wants, you know, she feels like she's overwhelmed and she needs to get clients on a consistent basis. So that's her backstory. That's where she is in the moment. Okay. And then the next sec uh, section is needs. And so in the needs section, you're going to go over what is the backstory? What are, you know, after we figure out the backstory, what are the needs that Stephanie has in order to fix the backstory problems? So for instance, we might say that some of the needs that Stephanie has is she needs accountability. She needs someone who's going to walk her through the process. She needs strategy. She needs tactics in order to um, implement the strategy. She needs um, a, a lot more support than than what she thought she needed initially, right? She needs someone who's going to be able to answer all of her questions and be there for her 
So we're going to list all of the things that Stephanie needs. Okay. And then you can do this for multiple target audience avatars or ideal customers or whatever you want to call them. This is all like that is interchangeable. But now that we have the list for this, we have what she needs. She needs the accountability, the support, the training. She needs strategy. She needs tactics. She needs something customized specifically for her. And so now that we've gotten that, next we want to figure out what are the solutions. And so we have the list of needs. And so now if we put together a solution for her, it would look something like maybe a group program where she can go and ask all kinds of questions and she would get support, not just from me, but from the rest of the group. She would have accountability because the rest of the group would be moving at a specific pace and she would want to stay, um, stay on that same pace. Now, in order to exceed her needs, I might offer something like a Voxer support or an additional email support or even a strategy se session for free in order to um, help meet her needs and help get her on the right track before she starts the group program. So now you can see that once we answer these four questions, we have the basic details about the person, but we've went and we've narrowed it down to one specific person. We're not working with everybody. Now we're working with Stephanie and that makes creating the content really easy because we know what Stephanie's pain points are and we know how to solve them. So after that, you have the needs of hers and then you have the solutions. And so it just makes everything much more cohesive when you narrow it down to one person and utilize that power of one in your marketing. Um, so let's jump and move on to the tips. If you have any questions about creating your um, target audience, just let me know. The link to this workbook is going to be in the description. Um, and let's move on. So the three tips that I have, which I love to share with everyone is about your target audience being not about you, like the brand around the target on is around the target audience. It's not about what you like. So for instance, if you love the color purple, um, maybe that's not something that really resonates with your target audience. And once you get into a little bit more of the branding process, then you would be able to select the colors that would fit. And maybe purple isn't in that in it. And that's fine because you're trying to speak to Stephanie versus to what you like. Okay. So it's not about you. It's about your target audience. Don't worry about, you know, things like colors and, and all of those, because that's not the most important thing to even focus on. The next thing is copying or mimicking someone else's brand is not going to bring you their success. Um, after eight years of working with clients for branding, web design, for, you know, sales pages, membership sites, all things online business. I've had multiple people ask me to replicate or mimic, mimic, copy someone else's brand. And I would just refuse because it's not going to bring you that same success. And so I could say we could use this as inspiration and pick out the pieces that we do like, but we cannot copy it and we cannot utilize it for, um, for ourselves. And also one thing that I want to point out is just because they look like they're having success, it doesn't mean that they are. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the third tip that I have for you today is when you're creating your logo, which is your part of your brand identity. So first there's two parts of branding. You have your brand strategy and then you have your brand identity. The brand strategy is partly what we just went over. It's foundational pieces, finding out who you're working with, what makes you different, why are you doing this, what is the messaging behind what you're offering. Those are all part of the strategy that you have. And then based on the strategy, you would create your identity, which is all the visual aspects of your brand. So, um, when you are creating your logo, 
keep it very simple. I've had multiple clients come to me and want very um, intricate designs for their logos. And I've always tried to steer them towards doing something that is more simplistic. And, you know, and even if you look at my logo, it's a very basic script, you know, but it works, it works fine. And um, it's been working for all this time and I have no complaints about it. And so with your logo, just keep it simple. You'll see the big brands, they do that too. They have very simple logos, nothing too extensive or um, intricate at all. So there you have it. Where we went through the target audience, we went through you know some branding tips, and this should help you with discovering your own target audience. If you have any questions, grab the guide, and you can find my contact info in there. Shoot me a message, and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Have a wonderful day.